Okay, we're gonna see if this thing will react now. It has its little moment whenever it has the right temperature out where it seems to, uh, I don't know, uh, stumble. It only happens for a little bit and then it goes away. Sometimes you can see it with the RPM, but uh, we'll see. starting to see it that right there now wait it'll smooth out and it's over that's it that right there is the um, what do they call that uh, cylinder head temperature sensor that's on these Ford trucks Whenever they go bad, there's a there's a spot in them that uh, it doesn't get the appropriate voltage, and it causes the computer to start trying to find itself in a way of of a good idle. If these things completely go bad, it could cause a no start condition or a stall out condition. And uh, it has stalled out on me a few times, but it has to be a lot colder than what it is now. Right now, uh, according to the truck, it's 38 degrees. But like I said, it, it's certain time, like a certain temperature where it hits. So I know that's the sensor that's got a bad spot in it. But uh, anyway, I'm going to show you guys how to change that here in a little while. All right, everybody. Um, this is that cylinder head temperature sensor, and uh, we need to put some thread tape on it. Now, whenever you put the thread tape on, you want to make sure you put it on the right way, or otherwise you'll screw this in, and it'll peel the, the thread tape right back off. So our sensor it screws in clockwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our thread tape just like that and follow it and you only got to put a little bit just like that that way whenever you thread it in it won't peel it back off <sighs> this is a long job <laughs> This is actually just a take. I'm still in the process of actually doing it, so catch up with you. All right, everybody, this is Car Maniac 125. We're going to be changing out that uh, cylinder head temperature sensor on my truck. Anyway, I want to make sure you take a negative battery cable off before you get started. And, uh, we're getting out our breaker bar because we got to take the belt off, the alternator. Uh, we also got to take the intake pipe out of the way, which I already got loosened up. So uh, let's get started. This is a half inch drive. For your tensioner, you want to turn it clockwise to loosen the belt. We can just peel that up, leave it there, out of the way. Probably be a good idea to make sure you know which way that belt routes. I've changed it several hundred times, so I already know. And let's see. Well, I'll go ahead and pull this out of the way. These little plugs, you just push, you just push the little tab in, they pop right out. That's the air temperature sensor there. I'm 
not too impressed with this can and air filter assembly. Even with me loosening stuff up, it's still kind of tight, which I guess that's a good thing. All right, we're gonna get this boot off here for the uh, alternator or wire. It's a little 10 millimeter nut that holds the uh, power wire on there. Get that out of the way. We'll put this nut back on so we don't lose it. Fingers don't want to work today. I'm going to show you an easier way on how to unplug these wires from the back of the alternator. First, we're going to take the alternator out of the way. Uh, you could take these bolts here and here off and leave the bracket on the alternator, but I'm just going to take the one bolt that holds it to the alternator. And I know I made that look real easy, but uh, like I said, I went ahead and loosened everything up, so we can get through this quickly. Didn't want to make a video of uh, about a half hour's worth of me uh, cussing, bleeding, and whatever. <laughs> uh, this is where I get to lay down. I bet if people were seeing this right now, they'd be seeing my legs dangling out from underneath the hood of the truck. It'd be a good laugh. Now, whenever you take that top bolt off the alternator, it's going to put a little pressure on these bolts. So you kind of got to hold it up while you're undoing the threads. Getting the ratchet out of here that is always a good help, too. things in there I even loosened it up I don't know why they made them so long Yeah, see how long that was? Miserable. I probably should have took this bottom bolts out first. There it is. Goodness. All right. Now, let me see if I can do this without falling. <laughs> All right. We could just move the radiator hose out of our way. We'll slip our alternator out there. Now you understand why I told you to take the negative cable off the battery, not just because that's the proper way. 
because nine chances out of ten you're gonna definitely arc some power if you do not take that cable off all right so let me get this up so you guys can see Now you can just take a nice little screwdriver and undo that clip. There's that one. Turn this again so you can see. Get these wires out of our way. Reach in there and do that. Be careful. Don't need to put a lot of muscle into it. All right, our alternator's out of our way. Go ahead and take them wires and get them out of our way also. And yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get the camera in here for you. Alright, you see that there? That is where the sensor is. And uh yeah. It's it's a bear. Uh, the same the same way all these other uh, connections are with the little push in tab. It's the same with that. So uh, let me see if I can get you guys set here. This ain't easy. I'm probably going at an angle. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. But anyhow, you gotta take a screwdriver and uh, just push up on this a little bit, right in there. And then you should be able to pop the wire off. Oh, I'm gonna get in your guys' way. And there you have it out of our way now you're probably wondering how in the hell am I going to get that sensor out of there and yes there's going to be some coolant that comes out because I didn't drain it but that's okay if you want to drain the coolant for four times so you don't make a big mess by all means do so but uh I am not. <laughs> All right. Now what I do, this is a 19 millimeter. I'm slipping it in towards the back of the engine, like so. I'll get it on there. There she is. Just like that. And you reach towards the back. You know, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Those aren't in there very tight at all. And it should start to unscrew all the way out for you. And I'm getting my other sensor that I showed you earlier how to prep up and get ready to put in. So here goes nothing. Oh, look at that. New coolant came out. Hmm. Maybe I'm a little low. Yeah, see, they actually had that thread sealant. Okay, so we're going to put the new one in. This is one of them jobs you want to try to thread it in as much as possible <laughs> by hand otherwise if you wanted to do this the way the Ford manufacturer is going to tell people to do this is you're going to pull the uh, intake off which I don't intend on doing that because I, I already replaced those gaskets 
and the intake itself actually it's a common problem I don't want to go through it again all right and we're gonna get our wrench back in here snug it up you're golden one more thing also make sure you put a little bit of dielectric grease not necessarily in this plug but just put it right in there that'll help keep moisture out of there I'm giving you false reading uh, to the computer which uh, that was kind of what I had going on but what actually was causing it is there was a bad spot inside inside the uh, windings on the inside of that sensor and certain temperature it would reach there and it would be dead you know there would just it wouldn't show no temperature so now the truck's computer is trying to figure out what's going on and it's trying to readjust the idle so the idle would go up and down almost uh i had it stall out one time so that's how you fix it the rest of the stuff you just put it back together all right people bye